Looking at the heart model, the first thing we want to do, we want to follow the cardiac heart supply, the coronary um, blood flow. So coming from the aorta, we can see the left coronary artery coming here below the right auricle. And then we have one major branch, the marginal artery, which is accompanied or like which is drained on the other side by the area is drained by the um, small cardiac vein. And you can see the right coronary artery continues to the posterior side of the heart, which we will follow in a little bit. On the left side, we have the left coronary artery, but we can see only a very small piece of the left coronary artery because it originates behind the pulmonary trunk from the left side of the aorta. And as I said, it right away splits here into the circumflex artery, reaching all around on top of the left ventricle and then below the r left atrium. It continues also into the atrioventricular artery lying here on the interventricular septum. And this area is drained by the great cardiac vein. Now we, have, we want to follow the right coronary artery further to the posterior side of the heart. You can see we find another branch, which is the posterior interventricular artery. And this area supplied by this uh, posterior interventricular artery is drained by the middle cardiac vein. All three veins, the middle cardiac vein as well as the great cardiac vein and the small cardiac vein, enter into the coronary sinus. The coronary sinus itself will drain into the right atrium, just like the inferior vena cava, which we can see here entering on this side. If I now come back to the anterior area of the heart, and we can see here our right atrium, which receives blood from the brachiocephalic veins which combine towards the superior vena cava entering our right atrium. Here we inside the right atrium. Sorry. And there you can also see the entrance area or the drainage of the coronary sinus, the inferior vena cava, the superior vena cava. And now, when we follow the blood and go through the AV valve, in the, which connects the right atrium to the right ventricle, this AV valve is called the tricuspid valve, and it's attached with the chordae tendine, and these are attached with the papillary muscles on three different areas in the right ventricle. What we also can see is these ridges here in our right ventricle, as well as later in the left ventricle, these are the trabeculic coronae. In the atrium, we find similar ridges also, but these are called pectinate muscles. So these are smaller ridges, the pectinate muscles, and we can see the auricle again here on the side, also from the inside of the right atrium. Now the blood would leave the right ventricle through the semilunar valve, specifically the pulmonary semilunar valve, because it will enter the pulmonary circuit via the pulmonary trunk, who splits very quickly here into the right, into the left and right pulmonary artery. You can see here also another remnant from the fetus. This is the um, ligam ligamentum arteriosum which is the ductus arteriosus for the fetus, where we also have, again, a shortcut because, the, as we know, the fetus does not use the lungs. So the blood will be flowing from the lungs back to the heart via the pulmonary veins, who will enter into the left atrium. And here you can see the left atrium with its left auricle. And besides these two pul left pulmonary veins, we also have two right pulmonary veins, which are more on the posterior side. The, pulmonary, uh, the left atrium is connected via the AV valve called bicuspid or mitral valve. And as you can see, it has, just like before, the corda tendine, 
which are then attached to the papillary muscles, the yeah, one also on the front. And the left coron, uh, ventricle has, just like the right, a lot of um, trabecular coronae. Now, from the left ventricle, we would enter towards the aorta via the aortic semilunar valve, which are visible far in the back here behind the AV valve. The aorta itself will bring the blood via the ascending aorta, and as we said, going right away, the earliest exits are the coronary arteries, going up to the ascending aorta, aortic arch, to the descending aorta, but from the aortic arch we have the brachiocephalic trunk leaving first, then the left common carotid artery, followed by the left subclavian artery. Just closing these quick and sh show you on the back side too, where we can see this is the main part of our left atrium, and here we have the right pulmonary veins coming back into the heart. This is the left pulmonary artery leaving, and here is the azygos vein also draining in the superior vena cava.